So welcome to today's weekly live forex market analysis. Before we start, we'll quickly go through a risk disclaimer as always. So trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Before deciding to trade foreign exchange, you should carefully consider investment objectives, level of experience and risk appetite. There is a possibility that you may sustain a loss of some or all of your investment and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all of the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. Basically, to sum this up, risks, risk comes from uh, not knowing what you do and to minimize risk, it takes years of experience and knowledge. And this is what we'll try to achieve um, in today's webinar. So today's host will be uh, Jakub Brahevov and myself, Edmundas Pavelavichus. If you have probably know Jakub, he's a professional trader, trainer, and author of an upcoming Forex Not for Dummies book. He has also uh, been nominated as the best trader of the year by multiple independent media sources since he joined the Forex industry in 2005. Though I should note, due to some personal issues, Jakob will likely not be able to join today's evening, unfor uh, today's meeting, unfortunately. Though if he will join, he will be at the end of the webinar. Though this should not uh, stop us uh, from having an awesome webinar. And my name is Edmundas Pavlovichus. You might also know me, but for those who don't, my, I'm a senior financial analyst at A2Z Forex and head of A2Z Financial Tools. Um, I'm an ongoing social entrepreneur and I have been working with multiple professional brokers, traders and trainers. So just to quickly recap what was happening uh, last week from fundamental perspective. So the two main, uh, two main events uh, were between uh, Russia and US as well as North Korea. So the, the, the diplomatic tension between the two major countries over Syria has been uh, one of the major drivers of risk aversion in the market last week. Basically what happened was that US launched 59 cruise missiles at a government controlled air base in Syria over allegations uh, of a chem chemical attack that uh, Russia believes has been staged. And as you know, Russia um, supports Syria's uh, government and uh, you have clearly got a conflict of interest here. As well as we had a development in North Korea, which added to the already increased, uh, increased risk of sentiment after Pyongyang threatened the US with an inhaling strike in, in its um, military demonstrations. So what these developments mean for us? Well, as always, when there's risk in the market, we have um, safe haven assets such as gold and Japanese yen appreciating. And this is exactly what we saw uh, last week. Uh, some of the fundamental developments to watch this week are um, we'll, on Monday, we'll have China's first um, gross domestic product release. Uh, basically, this will be useful if, if you trade uh, yuan or Australian dollar, since Australia, dollar, Australia is quite tight uh, with China. While on Thursday, we'll have BOE's Governor Carney's speech, as well as uh, U Treasury's, uh, Treasury of the United States Secretary uh, Munchen um, speech. In addition of these two developments, um, we should also look for the French elections later this month. Basically, a recent poll indicated that there's a, that all scenarios are possible, uh, which means that it's also likely that um, it's also a victory of a far right leader, Marine Le Pen, is also possible, and this would in greatly increase the chance of Brexit. You know that we just recently had Brexit. And now additional fear of Brexit and Grexit and whatever uh, um, pressurizes uh, Euro, basically gives downward pressure to it. With that said, 
now that we are all on the same page, let us look into our weekly analysis on, we'll be looking into gold, Euro USD, GBP USD, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and lastly, Australian dollar, US dollar. So let, let's quick, quickly switch to our chart. All right, starting with gold, uh, we'll use a top to bottom approach, basically, which means that we'll look uh, from weekly time frame down to hourly time frame. Well, just in some cases, we basically we'll stick the, to weekly and daily time frames for most pairs. Well, looking at gold um, from indicators perspective, I still believe that we uh, we should see a further upside. Um, this would be indicated by weekly MACD as the bar bars continue to uh, grow in size above the neutral zero level, while our RS uh, weekly stochastic is above uh, above 80 zone, which which does warn of a possible correction, but this is not yet confirmed. We should, as I always stress, we should first look for a confirmation of a break. Uh, below the 80 level from above. So uh, these both indicators um, suggest that further upside for gold is um, expected, as well as from fundamental perspective, uh, which uh, which confirm this um, this view. Uh, we should also, you know, we should also follow both uh, the developments in Syria and North Korea. As such, we should better look for a correct, possible correction from either 50 or 38.2 Fibonacci retracement levels at uh, 1,291.5 and 1,303 respectively. Though we should first look for a confirmation of, um, um, of a top. This would come either as a... Um, as a dodgy, a sword candle, though sword should be at the top, not at the bottom, or a, a stagnation, or whatever possible, or a double top, or you, you can you name it. But this correction, uh, we we could look to short this correction back towards um, 76.4 as the final target, though our first and second targets would come at the following Fibonacci levels of 50 and 61.8. Though you should know that uh, this is a correction, a beer, this would be a bearish correction amid a bullish trend, uh, which is confirmed by both um, 20 and 100 day moving averages, which are sloping upwards, as well as our weekly indicators and uh, daily MACD and oscillator. So this implies that you should only risk half of the usual um, you should only take half of the usual risk. Moving on to EURUSD, the pair remains to trade suppressed, um, well, suppressed by that moving averages, as well as the fundamental developments that we just talked um, a few slides ago. Um, therefore, the current developments might be taken as just a bullish correction. We see a uh, uh, we see higher highs and higher lows uh, form being formed. However, uh, as I just mentioned, this comes uh, amid overall bearish trend. Though we should, we could also say that the EURUSD remains to trade in a broad consolidation level between between 1.042 and uh, one point, more or less 1.15. Um, so with that said, from indicators perspective, over weekly time frame, the outlook that well, the indicators suggest that the pair, as we just said, is in a bullish correction, and we, therefore we should look for, look for possibilities um, to uh, to short euro. However, as we have the both, uh, as we have uh, higher highs and higher lows, we should uh, we should 
still possibly see um well i would i wouldn't expect uh, the bullish continuation yet not without a uh, price uh, confirmation over our price action and over the daily time frame we have our we, uh, daily stochastic suggesting further upside but our daily macd uh, keeps forming bars below uh, below the neutral zero level so we can take daily uh, indicators as mixed so the setup for euro usd uh, that i have noticed is based purely on fibonacci and price action and uh, which would suggest to long still long euro uh, euro usd from uh, either 88 percent or 100 percent fibonacci retracement levels at uh, 1.06 or 1.052 though as i mentioned this would be only um, bullish correction and similarly what we did for gold we should only risk half of the um, half of the entry that we usually take in any case um, we could expect the pair uh, after a confirmation of a, again of a dodgy um, sword candle or double top we should look for uh, rise towards our recent uh, high which would be fibonacci 50 percent at 1.09 or possibly even further um, at 30 fibonacci 38 2 percent at 1 101 which is also a psychological um, resistance level from there from there on i would expect the bearish um bearish trend to take over and we should look for a retest of uh, nearby lows this would especially come during the time of uh, presidential well french presidential elections and uh, with concerns of a third world war this would also uh, wouldn't look great for euro moving on to gbp usd uh, the outlook for the pound is a bit different uh, than for the previously analyzed pairs uh, what we have i haven't drawn fibonacci here uh, but what we can clearly see is that um, that is that the pound is trading in a narrowing triangle and overall trend uh, uh, for the pair remains strongly well strongly bearish though based on the weekly uh, macd we might well we might view the current developments as uh, just a um, consolidation or um, bullish correction therefore with a strong bearish uh, strong bearish trend we might look for a breakout below the um, lower trend line but in any case um, the best setup for um, uh, trading uh, narrowing triangles is to wait for a breakout uh, in any direction should that be a should it be a breakout or a break below the upper or lower trend lines we should not buy immediately as what what most traders would do the breakout since it tends to be a false but rather wait for a correction back towards uh, the trend line and only buy from there or wait for a breakdown then a retest again of the lower trend line and only send sell then while in the meantime we might although it might be a bit too late but we might still benefit for from a, on daily time frames from a corrections um, from corrections from the trend lines we can see that from daily trend line uh, daily time frame better just like it did uh, here we had a confirmation of double top and um, a fall of 150 pips followed and here we have similar developments but with both uh, moving averages 20 and 100 moving averages sloping upwards uh, we might likely see a retest uh, a touch of a touch of the price action of the 20 ma and possibly um, further upside towards the trend line 
from where uh, we might see some again bearish developments and what overall look for the develop uh, for breakouts. So this is really some of the GBP USD. Though I should know that if you have any questions, you can always ask. Uh, you can always ask now in the right hand chat section, and I will go through them at the end of the analysis. So I'm now moving on to Australian dollar, US dollar. Again, from the weekly time frame, what we can see is um, that the pair remains to trade similarly like Euro in a broad consolidation uh, range between levels um, 0 0.78 and uh, 0 point more or less 7. Uh, this is confirmed by uh, weekly uh, MACD, which is which remains to fluctuate uh, around the neutral zero uh, level for well for almost a year now. So we, which implies that both central banks, well, which implies that Australia, uh, central bank of Australia, um, really is comfortable with the Australian dollar being at this level. So in any case, we can expect um, the current con consolidation to continue unless uh, we'll see any major changes from the central banks. But with that uh, said, we, we can see that our daily indicators suggest a temporary bullish correction as indicated by daily oscillator which is sloping upwards and approaching the um, well we can say it overbought 80 level and uh, by our daily MACD which forms bars closer to the neutral zero level therefore we should look for a possible uh, well possible top either at Fibonacci 38.2 percent or Fibonacci 23.6 levels uh, or resistant levels, which are at 0 0.76 and 0 0.7666, two nice numbers there. So from there on, um, we should again look for a top uh, indicated by the price action, a confirmation that is, and from there look to sell if we have a rebound from 23.6, we should look, aim for uh, our targets at 50%, and if we have a rebound from 38.2%, we should take the 50% Fibonacci retracement level as our first target, then Fibonacci 61.8% as our second target at 0 0.75, and our last target should be uh, at 76.4. Now moving to our last analysis for New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Again, switching back to daily time frame. Um, so at the moment, uh, since I think we could say since the turn of 2017, uh, the bear has switched into um, more or less consolidation, similarly like Australian dollar, uh, even though the overall, um, even though the overall outlook for the pair is uh, well still bearish. If we would look from the nearby, uh, well from the high at 2014, mid 2014. So um, we might take this development here as a possible bullish, uh, just a bullish correction. And either this is a consolidation or the pair is ready to switch back into bearish mode once again. In any case, we can benefit from both, uh, uh, from both bull and bear market. At the moment, what we can see is uh, from weekly time frame is what we can see is the peer pair trading between 120 moving averages this well um, I already mentioned several times this is a called an MA sandwich and what we can expect during the MA sandwich is for the pair to trade well erratically and fluctuate between these two uh, levels which are at 0 0.7 which is also a psychological level 
and uh, Fibonacci 100% at 0 0.169, which also might be taken as a psychological level. And we can actually see, the, just to see if we can confirm that on the daily time frame, we, yeah, we can see how, how the candles are, what's the word for it? Well, tricky, if we can call it. We have a lot of fluctuations happening here. If we would look from an intraday point of view or even swing. In any case, um, the pair seems to be suppressed by the both downward sloping moving averages. While from the daily time frame, we have um, somewhat um, a bullish correction indicated by the uh, oscillator and MACD, in which case we could uh, look to sell um, to sell New Zealand dollar, Australian New Zealand dollar, US dollar based on the weekly time frame as well as the um, 20 and 100 moving averages on the daily time frame. So possible points of reversal would be at psychological level just above 0 0.7 at 0 0.703 or possibly at Fibonacci 50% uh, at 0 0.706 which is also near a 100 moving day 100 day moving average so from there onwards once with a confirmation from the price action we should look to to sell uh, give it towards Towards Fibonacci 100% at 1. Point, uh, sorry 0. 0.6888, taking um, taking 0. 0.99 as our first target. Um, Fibonacci 88% as our second target at 0. 0.6693. And the final target will be the Fibonacci 100%. So this finalizes today's um, today's uh, weekly outlook outlook for next week. Um, today's webinar was sponsored by Trade.com in association with A to Z Forex. And Trade.com is one of few A to Z approved uh, brokers. And you can find more about it on a 2 zforexcom going to the directory. So with that said, it's now time for question and answer session.